Before we get started, I want to show off my wand. Not a euphemism. I wand. I just, I never get to show this off and I never find the right context to do it. So I thought this was good context. So I have a wand. Let's start the review now. Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore is the third movie in the Fantastic Beasts prequel series to the Harry Potter franchise, once again directed by David Yates, who seems to have become the default director for the Wizarding World stuff now. And this one brings on Steve Cloves from the first eight Harry Potter movies as screenwriter again. And this continues the story that we were telling in The Crimes of Grindelwald. At the end of that movie, you found out that Credence, played by Ezra Miller, is Dumbledore's long-lost brother. And there seems to be a sort of ploy by Grindelwald played in this movie by Mads Mikkelsen to try and use him against Albus and essentially try and take over both the Wizarding World as well as the Human World. And so Newt's commander and a trope of new characters have to essentially come together and stop this from happening. Before I go on with this review, I want to print a retraction of sorts. Let's go back to The Crimes of Grindelwald, which is a movie that at the time I really enjoyed. In fact, I gave it a very positive review. And I've come to realize in the days since that it might have to do with the experience. You see, I went to see it with a friend of mine and I guess it's sort of enchanting like you have so much fun with this person you're like hey, even the movie's improved but ever since then I haven't been able to watch the movie at least not in one sitting and even the extended cut which I can say is marginally better I have not enjoyed quite as much and so originally I think it gave it a very very high rating of something like an 8 out of 10 that'll probably be like a 5.5 out of 10 right now I'm glad we've got that part out of the way though because it'll justify the grade I'm giving to this movie which will come at the end of the video and I can say for a fact that this is a far better movie than The Crimes of Grindelwald. In this case, by bringing Steve Cloves back, first of all, this guy did so much for those eight movies, he really needs to be given more credit for that. He does some damage control. There are certain things that are sort of abandoned and some things that are reworked into something else. And while they're not all effective, they're far better than the outcome that was going to probably happen down the line. It definitely seems like there were improvements made to certain plot points. There's one thing in particular that they've done so much pinballing with over these three movies that I'm still not sure if it's good or bad, but it makes for a much more cohesive movie. And it leads to, again, some moments in this which were genuinely quite heartfelt. It felt like it was back to the original spirit of these movies and of this franchise. And it also helped anchor it quite a bit, even in scenes which were not, you know, going exactly super well for a while. But Cloves manages to reinfuse that sort of energy back into the series, which is something to be massively credited. All of the performances are pretty great. Newt Scamander, Eddie Redmayne, is once again terrific, and I really love this character. He's this sort of naive self who is, you know, hyper-focused and just not being able to register certain emotions. He plays it really, really well. Uh, Jude Law as Albus Dumbledore, fantastic. He has a lot more to do in this movie, so if you liked him a lot in Grindelwald, you're going to be very happy with this one. Mads Mikkelsen as Grindelwald should have been choice number one. I feel like they should have gone with him from the get-go. I mean, sure, you can do the whole Colin Farrell transition to this other character, but then I feel like it should have been Mikkelsen because he absolutely crushes it in the role. He's fantastic in this movie. Really, I couldn't think of any performance in it that was off. I think everybody did a really, really good job. And I think the connection that they established between him and Dumbledore is established nicely. Like, yes, they do officially state that these two were lovers, ex-lovers now. And yes, it's, it's like surface level. Like, if you're expecting something groundbreaking in terms of like representation with Dumbledore, then you're not going to get that. You just essentially get a couple of talking points to, you know, uh, support that argument. But that's about it. But fine. They acknowledge it. Cool. It's, it's all right. It's, again, it's not much. It's very bare bones minimum. So make of that whatever you will. The action sequences are a lot better too. There's a lot more going on in this movie, but they're also doing it in a much more effective way. That energy that I was talking about that comes back in this movie, it extends to everything. There's a lot more enjoyment and a lot more intensity to everything that you're seeing on screen. And it is visually really great. The special effects are generally quite nice. Like there's a couple of visuals that were 
genuinely quite remarkable and i mean as as these movies go they still remain visual treats and that extends to the costume designing and, and the production and all of it which this one had a very troubled one because of covid and so there are certain characters in it who for you know reasons that can go beyond whatever's in here you don't see too much of like Catherine waterston as tina goldstein you don't see too much of her in this movie and that has to do apparently with a bunch of reasons that also include she got COVID and so she wasn't on set quite a bit. And you can kind of tell like that's what happened. So if that's the case, then well, that, that explains that. So despite all that, the film still comes together fairly decently, but it is a bit scattershot still. When I said that there's a lot of damage control going on, it extends essentially to that first half because it makes things feel a little more jumbled. They're putting together a lot of different aspects of things and they're trying to do some commentaries. Not all of those things, again, land as well as they could. Some things feel a little too on the nose. And there's a lot of parallels that they're trying to make to real world things that are there right now like, and, you know, trying to compare to the time then, which, okay, some of that was fine, but it doesn't always come into focus that first half. It just feels like we're bouncing back and forth a little bit too much in terms of what they want the focus to be. Eventually, when the film does come into perspective, it leads to a fairly solid second act. And then the final act, that whole bit, I actually thought was really, really lovely. And in fact, the last about 10, 15 minutes of the movie are kind of beautiful. They're one of my favorites in like the Wizarding World series now. It's like a, it's a beautifully done finale. Overall, would I recommend seeing The Secrets of Dumbledore? Well, it depends. Is it going to get a lot of new fans into the franchise? Not necessarily. If you're already a fan of this, then you're probably going to go see this movie and it's probably going to make a lot of money. But I also feel like they've stretched themselves way too thin. Like watching this movie, I kept thinking that they should have stopped here. This should have been the last one and we should just move on now. But there's two more after this. And I have no idea what they're planning on doing. I feel like this should have been a great ending point. And when you see the movie, you can tell like they, they're trying to put it to a stop here. And I think that would be a wise decision because it just felt like we're just we're very much at the tethers of this thing now. Still, overall, I did have fun with The Secrets of Dumbledore, and I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It's going to be out in theaters in some places this week. It's going to be out in other theaters next week. So if you guys get a chance to see it, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe, and I'll see you guys at the movies.